This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, a Portland man charged with murder in connection with the death in Acadia National Park in June entered a plea in court today. So 35-year-old Raymond Lester entered a not guilty plea at his arraignment this afternoon. 35-year-old Nicole Mokeme died in a hit-and-run incident at the Scudic Education and Research Center in Winter Harbor. Mokeme was leading a black excellence retreat at the center at the time of her death. The state police spokesperson says her body was found on a paved walking path on the Scudic campus. Court records show police found tire tracks leading from a nearby parking lot. Police say Lester had been in a relationship with Mokeme and he was at the retreat. The U.S. Marshals Service Violent Offender Task Force arrested Lester in Cancun, Mexico, and he was returned to Maine. The Hancock County Grand Jury indicted him for murder in August. Maine State Police are currently investigating a homicide in Lewiston. On Wednesday, the Lewiston Police Department discovered the body of a deceased man after responding to a robbery complaint near 53 River Street. That body was taken to the office of the chief medical examiner in Augusta on Thursday morning, where an autopsy revealed the cause of death to be homicide. Major Crimes Unit detectives and members of the Maine State Police Evidence Response Team are still interviewing witnesses from the scene. Maine State Police officials say the identity of the man will not be released until next of kin have been notified. Well, 14 year old is facing charges following an assault in Bangor that sent another teenager to the hospital. Bangor Police Sergeant Jason McCambly says officers were called to the area of Langley Street just before 730 Tuesday night for a report of a person being assaulted with a knife. He says when officers arrived, they found for a 14 year old bleeding from his abdomen. The boy was taken to a local hospital to be treated for non life threatening injuries. According to McCambly, officers interviewed witnesses, but but did not find the suspect. They did find a BB gun that is believed to be involved. On Wednesday, Bangor police detectives searched a Bangor residence and arrested a 14 year old male. The boy is charged with elevated aggravated assault and was taken to the Long Creek Youth Development Center in South Portland. The family of Graham Locker is planning multiple rallies across the state to recruit more help in their ongoing search. 38-year-old Locker has not been seen since he ran from Dorothea Dick Psychiatric Center in Bangor back in early June. His mother, Tammy Locker Scully, says Graham is diagnosed autistic and schizophrenic, and she believes he could be hiding out in the woods. They're hoping to enlist more help statewide to boost the chances of finding Graham before winter sets in. We've tried to expand the effort to find him to the entire state by my husband and I visiting every uh, homeless shelter in the state and we've tried to uh, make people aware of his disappearance across the entire country through social media posts. The rallies will take place in Bangor on Friday, in Augusta on Saturday and again in Portland on Sunday. Locker's family will be handing out blaze orange hats and tip sheets describing Graham and what to do if you spot him. The family recently increased the reward for information leading to Graham's safe return from $500 to $2,500. Well, funding is on the way to Maine hospitals to help them in their recovery from the pandemic. The Maine Department of Health and Human Services has issued $25 million in payments that went out on Wednesday. According to a statement, those payments will help the hospitals address ongoing challenges such as workforce recruitment and retention. Governor Janet Mills said, quote, when the pandemic tested Maine hospitals, they rose to the challenge to take care of Maine people. Now with ongoing challenges, this investment will advance their their recovery and help ensure that they can continue to deliver the quality care that Maine people expect and deserve." End quote. The homeless crisis in Bangor is often a topic of discussion at city council meetings. On Monday at the Government Operations Committee meeting, a presentation from a Washington state company revealed a potential temporary solution. Benjamin Simons from Pallet showed off the temporary structures that have been the answer for some other cities around the country. These buildings can be set up in as little as 45 minutes. He says that this kind of housing for the city's homeless is a way for them to feel secure since the structures have locking doors for their belongings. They also offer a clean, warm option for them to stay in during the winter months. The idea was warmly received by the committee. This feels incredibly different from what you probably envision as a, um, a congregate shelter in that it, it feels 
very home-like. It feels very safe. It feels supportive. Um, and, and you see the success from it. I'm cautiously in, in favor of this. I, I, I truly believe this is a good project. Uh, when it is done in totality, it can't be addressed just, you know, a shelter. It's more than just a shelter. And this uh, solution, imperfect and not a silver bullet, but a shelter village would allow us to work on all three of those issues, housing, substance use disorder, and mental health care. There are still many questions that need to be answered before the city can approve a shelter village like this. The operations committee recommended the idea has merit, but more conversations are needed in order to move forward. Well, the town of Surrey is trying to slow down traffic along Route 172. The section of the road through Surrey has been the site of multiple speed related crashes, including a fatal crash last July. Multiple homes and businesses lined this road, putting pedestrians close to the traffic. And the town has recently placed gateway signs at each end of the village area, encouraging drivers to slow down. People need to pay attention and Hopefully the gateway signs here in Surrey will help slow down traffic and maybe other villages will consider the same thing. Well, the town also has a radar speed sign that is placed around the town to alert speeding drivers. The posted speed limit is 35 miles per hour along that stretch of road. He was hoping that people heed the signage and mm. think about their neighbors and take their speed down for safety. Absolutely, yeah. Always a, a good thing to stress. Absolutely. Well, other things to stress. <laughs> Really, really nice weather. Yeah, we've been having we it. We are enjoying it. Yeah, it sounds like more on the way as well. Indeed. Let's take a first look at our forecast. All right, thank you. Your first weather is brought by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest for over 70 years. And okay, for us temperature-wise, up near 60 today. 57 here in Bangor, 54 for Bar Harbor. We'll take it. Even warmer temperatures, though, are on the way. So low temperatures in the 30s tonight, followed by moderating temperatures tomorrow. And also for Saturday and for Sunday, we'll firmly be in the 60s this weekend. Are you ready for that? Okay, so lots of clear skies out there now. There have been some clouds across the area today, but all of this will stay to the west of us tonight. It is not going to rain or snow on us anytime soon. Our forecast then tonight, though, is partly cloudy skies to mostly clear skies with low temperatures down near 40. Your full forecast is coming up. All right, looking pretty good. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, the town of Bucksport moves forward with its next phase of the downtown revitalization project. We'll have that story and much, much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. I'm Jared Golden. Seeing some Washington politicians try and enrich themselves makes you think of this. That's why I'm working to clean up Congress by banning members from using insider information to trade individual stocks and why I'm leading the way to stop taxpayer-funded pay raises for Congress. And I'm not taking any PAC money from big corporations that already have too much influence in Washington. I'm Jared Golden and I approve this message to clean up Congress. Joe Baldacci was born, raised, and educated right here in Bangor. He's promoted and supported hundreds of millions of dollars in commercial and economic development projects. He has fought to protect vital services from drastic budget cuts. In his first term in the state Senate, Joe delivered for his constituents in Bangor and Herman on jobs, school funding, expansion of health care, and protecting the environment. Joe Baldacci, delivering results for the people of Bangor and Herman. You work the night shift. Take the extra shift. Wake up before dawn, and every paycheck you pay into Medicare and Social Security to fund the retirement you deserve. Bruce Poliquin voted to cut Medicare and put Social Security benefits at risk. He even wants to raise the retirement age. Pretty rich coming from a millionaire politician who's never had to pull an extra shift. Moderate PAC is responsible for the content of this ad. It's simple, and it's not an imaginary threat. In fact, it's happening right now all over the country. Bruce Poliquin would hand over control of our health care decisions to politicians. Poliquin would allow politicians like him to make abortion illegal, even in the case of rape and incest. But that's not the end of the story. Poliquin also supported a national abortion ban. So even if Maine says no, we still lose control of our health care decisions. Bruce Poliquin is a risk we just can't take. Center Forward Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. She's been learning about the founding of our country, about rights and freedoms. Freedoms that today are under assault. 
Politician Bruce Poliquin supported amending the U.S. Constitution to ban abortion. He even voted for a nationwide ban. Poliquin would allow politicians to stand between women and their doctors. He supported allowing states to outlaw abortion even in cases of rape or incest. We can't let Bruce Poliquin back in Congress. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Bucksport is moving forward with phase two of its downtown revitalization project to improve building storefronts in the downtown area. The ongoing project will cost $95,000 and bring in roughly $280,000 of revenue for the town. That's according to Richard Rotella, who's the community and economic developer director, development director for Bucksport. It's another way to show that the town is invested in its citizens, in its businesses, and we are here to help. It's just going to enhance the overall look of the downtown. Rotella says the first phase of the project utilized funds from the Maine Department of Transportation's MPI program to replace some of the deteriorating walls in downtown. Phase two now underway, and Rotella says that work has begun for phase three of the project, which will improve streets and sidewalks downtown. Well, a scrap metal company has proposed reopening a landfill at the site of a former Bucksport mill. American Iron and Metal owns part of the site at the old Verso paper mill. Now they're asking the town of Bucksport to partner in getting the landfill up and running. They can't be a commercially owned landfill in Maine now due to laws passed in the 80s. And, but municipalities can operate landfills. Further discussions on the project will take place during a committee meeting on November 10th. And coming up in sports, Bucksport football is gearing up for playoffs after their first season as an eight-man program. We'll have that story and much more after the break, so stay with us. I'll always be an independent fighter for you. Maybe he used to be. But when it mattered, Jared Golden helped Joe Biden hike taxes by billions on people making as little as 20000 a year and nearly doubled the IRS, targeting middle-class families for more, all while giving new tax breaks to the elite. Jared Golden, he's not our independent fighter anymore. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home the Kubota VX Series for zero down, 0% zero APR for 60 months, plus save up to $700. eighty seven thousand new irs agents jared golden and the democrats in congress voted to hire them they doubled the size of the irs to seize another twenty billion dollars in new taxes from the middle class and now democrats openly threaten to raise taxes again next year jared golden won't stop them he votes with biden and pelosi eighty three percent of the time it's a war on the middle class and jared golden marches with them the NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Joe Biden is crushing Maine. And who does Jared Golden support? Golden's backing Biden. Jared Golden said Joe Biden has leadership that the country needs right now. Higher taxes, record inflation, and still. Golden's backing Biden. In D.C., Joe Biden relies on Jared Golden's votes. President Joe Biden, I'm asking you to vote for Jared Golden. Jared Golden says he's independent, but anytime it matters, Golden's, Golden's backing, backing Biden. Biden. I'm Bruce Poliquin, and I approve this message. Joe Biden and Janet Mills are working together to crush Maine families with rising costs. Mills and Democrats' radical plan targeting gas and home heating fuel will raise Maine's gas tax by up to 40 cents a gallon. And Mills' new tax on food and household essentials will increase monthly grocery bills by nearly $60. And the Biden Mills crush on Maine families. Stop Janet Mills. The top funder of Maine Families First is Thomas Klingenstein. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back.
back in. Thank you for staying with us. It is finally that time of the year. The weather's getting colder, the days are getting shorter. The fall sports teams are preparing for their quarterfinal matchups. Wednesday was the last day of the regular season, so the heel points have all settled in, and we have our playoff schedules. Let's roll them. Starting with field hockey. In Class A, Camden Hills is going to top-ranked Skowhegan. These are all Tuesday the 25th. Uh, Brunswick and Mount Ararat will play each other. Brewer heads to Oxford Hills on Tuesday, and then Bangor heads to Mesolonsky. Class B, it's Old Town at Unbeaten Lawrence. Gardner and Coney in the 5-4 and four matchup. Oceanside and Belfast the 7-2. and two. And then Herman heads to Nokomis. That again is Tuesday the 25th. And in Class C, it's Piscataquis at Dirigo. Foxcroft and Spruce Mountain. Mount View and MCI. And then Orono will take on the Dexter Central Co-op. Over to boys soccer now. Let's check out those quarterfinal matchups. For Class A and B, you have Mesolonsky and Brunswick. Brewer and Mount Blue. Mount Ararat and Camden Hills, Oxford Hills and Bangor. These are girls, by the way. For Class B, Winslow John Baptist is playing. Uh, Winslow and John Baptist will play Herman. Oceanside Waterville is the 5-4 matchup. Ellsworth heading to Presque Isle. And then the winner of Belfast and Nokomis will play Old Town. So let's go to boys soccer. Or staying with girls soccer, Class C and D, sorry. Orono and Washington Academy will take on the unbeaten Bucksport. Fort Kent and Central in a very good 5-4 matchup. You have... Mount View and Dexter, and the winner of that one playing Holton, and then uh, PCHS Panquist, the winner of that plays MCI. Class D, Fort Fairfield and Bangor Christian against PVHS. Central Aroostook and Shed will play the uh, Hodgden. You have the 11 and 6 between the main school of science and math and Madawaska. They will play Ashland, and then the winner of that 10 7 matchup plays Wisdom. For boys soccer now, Hamden Academy and Edward Little, the 8 and 1 matchup Class A. Camden Hills, Lewiston, 5 and 4. Brewer, Brunswick, 7 and 2. That game is Wednesday. Bangor, Mount Ararat, the last matchup there. Caribou and Old Town will play John Baps, the winner of Caribou Old Town, Presque Isle versus MDI. Foxcroft and Ellsworth, Oceanside and Coney, the winner of that takes on Winslow. And then for C and D, Panquist and George Stevens, winner of that plays Fort Kent. Mount View faces Naraguegas in the 5 and 4. Callis MCI will play Bucksport. And then the 10 7 matchup between Central and Sumner will play Washington Academy. For Class D, Machias and Lee Academy, the winner of that plays Bangor Christian. The 12 and 5 matchup between the main school of science and math and PVHS goes on to play HUD. <clears throat> The winner of Hodgdon Skank, excuse me, Woodland and Wisdom, winner of that plays Fort Fairfield, and then Katad and Easton, the winner of that plays Matawaska. Needed a little bit of a breath right there, kind of lost my footing, but let's stay with some high school sports. And on the topic of playoffs, over in Bucksport, the Golden Bucks are preparing for playoffs after their first year as an eight-man football program. Because of declining numbers, the Bucks officially transitioned to the eight-man small division this offseason. They've had a pretty successful go at it in year one. They finished the year the fourth overall seed in the Northern Division, hosting a playoff game this Friday. They say it's been pretty different so far, but it's still just football. It's definitely been a lot different than 11 man. and It's been a big switch for us as a team, but having good chemistry and just playing as a team in and out of the locker room, we've just done pretty well so far. We've cracked down on them a lot since the beginning of the season, so it's been pretty good so far. I mean, it's still football. There's still still the whole game minus three people so like i said there's a lot more open field it is a little different with less less people on the field i mean it's it's kind of hard to explain but playing playing the game it's, it's definitely a lot different bucks closed off the season down in dexter last weekend falling to the unbeaten tigers 30 to 22 just one score away they tell me that game gives them a lot of confidence heading into playoffs knowing they were right there they host the fifth seeded orono on friday night and they're prepared for a very good game. Uh, they're a super pass-heavy team. I know the quarterback. He's he's pretty good. They got a good group of receivers, so we know that our secondary's got to be on their best game. Connor, last game, was isolated. He had a phenomenal game, had a pick last game. So we know that our pass coverage needs to be very, very good. They're definitely a very good team. They have a lot of skill in their wide receivers and their defensive backs. They're very good, and their coach is very knowledgeable. He's been doing it a while, so I think it's going to be a good game. Should be a good one there on Friday. Staying with football here, I promised an update, and here it is. At practice on Thursday, Patriots quarterback Mac Jones was reportedly working with the first-string offensive line, something Zappi's been doing the last few weeks, and he looked good, too. Footage from practice today, courtesy of our friends at WFXT in Boston. Mac looked very mobile on that left ankle, very comfortable. All signs right now point towards him 
being the guy Monday night against the Bears. Zappy Fever not forgotten, though. I'm sure with him having proved himself, Jones could have a maybe a tight leash. Mac has five picks through those first three games. Zappy with only one through his two, two and a half games, I guess. So, like we said Wednesday, a good problem to have right now for the Pats, but looks like Jones will be under, under center on Monday night. All right, that is all the time we have for sports. Here is your full five-day forecast. All right, thank you. Let's start here. The Weather Service came out with their winter projections today, a very La Nina-like pattern here, which typically gives us an active storm track all winter long, and some really cold air is really close by, uh, so it could go either way. On paper, that looks like this. We're calling for above average temperatures uh, December, January, and February for winter, and then precipitation-wise, close to average or for some of the areas, slightly above average. So we'll see. This is the outlook, though, for winter, and that could mean a very active winter for us with that La Nina pattern setting in. Today, though, temperatures hanging out in the upper 50s. Nice day, right? 57 here in Bangor. 54 Bar Harbor, 56 for Millinocket. Cooler temperatures are just off to the west of us. Those, though, will stay there for now. We actually have warmer temperatures on the way. Right now, though, it's very windy, right? We've had wind gusts out there today near 30 miles per hour. This will actually die down for several hours tonight. That could give us some dense fog. We'll be back tomorrow out of the south southwest. It could gust near 25 miles per hour again, making lots of waves on the area lakes for sure. Low temperatures tonight hanging out mid 30s or so, but then rebounding nicely tomorrow back up into the upper 50s to low 60s again. We'll take it and we'll do the same thing on Saturday. So very nice weekends on the way. Again, if your boat is still in or your pier is still in, use this weekend to your advantage with lots of sunshine and temperatures hanging out near 60. OK, so lots of clear skies out there now that has not been the case all day. There's been some clouds across our region as that big, huge upper level low is still in the region uh, just off to the west of us, right? Uh, it's sitting and spinning over there. So that will all stay there as it's going this way. We will stay in a drying trend tonight and really into the weekend. Uh, our next chance for rain most likely not getting in here until probably Monday of next week as that's this system well over here to the west of us. But again, until then, we have an incredibly nice weekend on the way with late October temperatures in the 60s for highs this weekend. Future cash shows the story. So nothing going on tonight. Here's tomorrow morning 6 30 don't forget your sunglasses tomorrow and then a very nice day tomorrow a very nice night tomorrow night a very nice day for saturday also for sunday before we get something starting to approach us later on sunday that could give us some rain showers on monday but overall a quiet pattern for us right now our forecast then tonight though is lots of clear skies out there some dense fog is likely well after midnight look for low temperatures down near 35 for tomorrow all right it's friday <laughs> mostly sunny tomorrow highs back up near 60 to get again with that southwest breeze around 5 to 10. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast shows we're in a pretty good spot here, right? 58 tomorrow. Look at the weekend. Lots of sunshine Saturday, 65, Sunday, 64. Our next chance for rain gets in here on Monday, likely lingering into Tuesday afternoon. So Mac looked good. I feel like there was both relief and excitement in your voice. Yes, I was yeah. very happy to see him running around on that ankle and kind of hopping around, doing all the same drills and working with the ones team. Mm -hmm. right. I think I've said it before. I think Mac's a better quarterback, and I think we'll yeah. see it on Monday. Yeah, that's a big indicator, like you said, to working with that first team. So all signs really pointing towards yes. him making that start. Yeah, and that's right. been zappy with the offensive line these last couple of weeks at practice. Mac out there today at the beginning of practice. They're only allowed to shoot about 10 minutes of practice down there at Foxborough. Bill runs a tight ship, as we know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it looked good. Well, and, and all things, that, no matter what, you know, Zappi proved himself. Yeah. He had a great couple of games, you know, great showing for himself, great showing for the Patriots. So regardless of whether, you know, he gets taken out and Mac goes back in or not, you know, it was a, it was a great job and he should be really proud. Yeah, and win-win too, because if Mac goes out and doesn't look as good, well, you just bring on Zappi and he keeps you, rolling. Yeah, you know, Zappi's up Ooh, to the task. Exactly. I think a lot of people around, uh, around the region are kind of almost hoping for that because I've heard a lot <laughs> of the Zappi fever crowd, like, Oh, you know, he's the guy, he's the guy. But I think it's just this this infatuation with, like, what's new and a shiny new toy. Would yeah, you agree with exactly. that? And I think also the, the way that Brady came about as right. a third string and then a backup quarterback, I think people are kind of trying to tie those two together. You're seeing it again. Yeah, yeah. you're either in two camps. You're either ride with Zappy or Max the guy. I think Max the guy. <laughs> All right. Team Mac over here. <laughs> we, should, we shall see. There's yep. more to come after the break. Stay with us.
we're paying more for food, gas, and rent. But Janet Mills wants to take even more of our money. Mills created a costly new grocery tax. Mills tax could cost us almost $60 more per month. Mills wants to raise the gas tax even higher. And thanks to Janet Mills, we're paying more to heat our homes, a lot more. We can't afford four more years of Janet Mills. The top funder of the Maine Republican Party is the Republican Governors Association. The better way to a better window, renewal by Anderson. Hi everyone, it's Troy Pearl. Prices are going up on everything, but we can help bring your energy costs down. All this month, when you buy four of our energy-saving windows, we'll give you a fifth for free, plus an additional 150 bucks off your entire project. For a free in-home consultation, visit rbagreatermain.com. The better way to a better window, renewal by Anderson. Don't be scared to buy a boat this season at Hamlin's Marine on the Belfast waterfront. Starting October 18th and running through Halloween, this is your ticket to the best boat deals completely scare-free. Featuring all-in-stock boat packages, outboards, boats, and trailers, 15 to 25% off. Spooky good deals. At Hamlin's Marine, we are powered by Yamaha Outboard. And we have more than 20 boat packages on display with easy loader trailers, too. Stop into the Belfast waterfront and don't be scared to buy a boat at Hamlin's Marine. 87,000 new IRS agents. Jared Golden and the Democrats in Congress voted to hire them. They doubled the size of the IRS to seize another $20 billion in new taxes from the middle class. And now Democrats openly threaten to raise taxes again next year. Jared Golden won't stop them. He votes with Biden and Pelosi 83% of the time. It's a war on the middle class, and Jared Golden marches with them. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Paul is just so driven to fix Maine's economy, secure jobs, and fight inflation that's harming our senior citizens and families with higher costs. He'll safeguard health care, fund police to stop crime, and ensure that parents have a voice in education to protect our kids and help them succeed. Paul always puts Mainers first, not the political insiders. So together, we can move Maine forward. However you spend your day, spend it in style. At Label Shopper, you'll find designer brands for 30 to 70% less than department stores. With prices this low, you can grab all your favorite styles. Label Shopper, great clothes, great prices. Tonight, with the balance of power at stake, the record turnout of early voters, plus the new atrocities in the latest chapter of Putin's war. More Americans turn to World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on all of television. driving by the Shaw's on Main Street near downtown Bangor, you may notice a mural being painted on the side of the building. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more on that. The Bangor community means a lot to me, having grown up here and done a lot of the community work here too. And I just really wanted a scenery that would capture the heart of what it means to be a part of this community and also show a place that's like treasured to both me and a lot of Mainers. Murals such as the one painted by Sam Bullard are really inspiring a change to this area of the city. Part of that is serving the surrounding neighborhood and we got some grants that allow for us to have murals in the neighborhood. It's kind of part of a participatory effort to help lift up our community. Revitalization projects such as the Shaw's mural is how Faircloth says that the effort given will help beautify the city. Last part of the vision is that we think it's a terrific neighborhood. It's been sort of neglected and that we're helping to bring people together. So this is really part of a overall plan to do our part to help lift up this section of the city. And Faircloth told me that murals such as this one is only to start to making Bangor better and safer to live. We're going to have more murals come in 2023. We'll look at some locations. We've talked about some locations with the city. Uh, so it'll partly be based upon what our committee decides in collaboration with those wherever we seek to locate the mural. Alana Lindsay, a lifelong Mainer who assisted Bullard with this mural, says art is the best medicine to creating safe and comfortable environments. People, they want to live somewhere that they can, like, enjoy being in. And it's hard to really respect your environment if it's not beautiful. 
Bullard is thankful for being picked to do this mural and hopes to inspire others to follow in her footsteps. I'm glad that it like uplifts people's spirits and that people are excited to see more art in Bangor. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. I definitely think the presence of art is uplifting in general. And then Absolutely. the image is so warm and inclusive and inviting. So yeah. it's I think it's exactly what, you know, really any area would benefit from artwork like that. Yeah, seriously. And really impressive there, too. Uh, hard to nail a sunset or maybe sunrise, yeah. that is, um, as it kind of looks like it's at Acadia. I know that's where the sun rises first in the U.S. So really And challenging cool on that brick, too. You have to wonder what challenges that presents as well. Yeah, so really cool to see that there. All righty, folks. Good night. Good night, everyone.